Welcome to this uh, lecture of the course uh, Computational Hydraulics. Uh, we are in module 4, uh, Surface Water Hydraulics and this lecture is for unit number 5, Steady Channel Flow, uh, Channel Network Without Reverse Flow Situation. Uh, learning objective uh, of this particular unit. At the end of this unit, students will be able to solve uh, steady channel flow for channel network problem without reverse flow situation using implicit method. Now problem definition to solution. Uh, we have already uh, defined our problem uh, for steady channel flow in terms of continuity equation which is uh, dq by dx equals to 0 and our momentum equation uh, dq by uh, d by dx equals to minus sf. With this uh, we have seen uh, how to discretize the governing equation uh, and how to solve uh, this um, channel flow problem. Uh, in the first approach, we have solved uh, this problem uh, considering that uh, discharge is constant or discharge is not varying. So, uh, in that case only flow depth uh, was a variable. Now if we consider that both flow depth and discharge are varying uh, for channel sections, then uh, we have two variables at each section. Now uh, for any problem we need to find out these two variables and the resulting equation is nonlinear in nature. So, we need to uh, solve it using uh, our iterative nonlinear solver or Newton Raphson technique. Now, for this problem uh, let us define uh, this flow without uh, reverse flow situation. Let us consider uh, this four channel reach situation. This is channel reach number 1, 2, 3 and 4. Uh, we have these four uh, channel reaches. Now, four for these four channel reaches, uh, we have three junctions. One is with red dot that is external uh, boundary condition and this blue dots or are internal boundary condition or junction conditions. So, in this case, we are considering this red dot as junction because the flow condition is such that the one channel is uh, joining at this point and we have another condition of exist uh, or a defined condition exists for this particular node. So, we will consider this red one as a junction node, but this is external junction and this blue ones are internal junctions. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, these 4 channel reaches and for this channel reaches, we are considering that for each channel reach we have starting from 1 to 
n1 plus 1 number of uh, sections again 1 to n2 plus 1 number of section for third one we have n3 plus 1 number of section and for last one n4 uh, 1. So, uh, if we add uh, all these sections, so all total we have n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4 plus 4 total uh, sections into 2. That means, by considering y and q as variables for each section, each section uh, we have these many uh, variables. So, this is variable number. Now, to solve this problem, we have uh, one continuity, one momentum equation for n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4 number of section or uh, in, in n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4 number of segments. For each segment, we can write one continuity, one momentum. So, we will have 2 into n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4 number of equations. So, uh, we need uh, 8 equations more to complete the set, then uh, equations. So, in this case, uh, if we consider these blue nodes, these are actually our uh, internal boundary conditions will have one continuity and two energy conservation conditions. In this case also, we will have one continuity and two energy conservation conditions, because we have three channels or channel reaches meeting at this point and at this point. So, we will get three equations each from these two internal conditions. So, all total we have added 6. So, still we need two conditions. So, how to define these two conditions? Either uh, we can have discharge and depth at downstream specified. So, if discharge in downstream is specified, uh, depth in downstream is specified, then we can get these uh, final or last two conditions. And then we can solve these equations to get the final uh, de desired output that is uh, the values of y and q for different sections. Now, in this case, uh, we know uh, what is the direction of flow. That is why we are not considering any reversal of flow situation. So, flow is from left to right. So, starting from 
uh, channel uh, section 1 at this point and ending at N1 plus 1 at this point. Again, the channel 2 is starting at 1 and it is ending at N2 plus 1. Here, the channel is starting at 1. So, channel 3 uh, N plus 1 and channel 4 it is starting at 1 and it is ending at N4 uh, plus 1. So, these are actually local numbering uh, for this problem. Now, we need a global numbering system for our problem uh, because we need to solve these equations simultaneously. So, let us see how we can define uh, those numbering uh, system or numbering scheme. So, uh, this is the simplified sketch of our problem. Uh, we have node number uh, 1 which is our external boundary condition and this node number 2 and 3 these are actually uh, our internal boundary conditions or junction conditions. In this case, uh, 1 is meeting at 3, uh, 2 is starting from this uh, node 3 and 3 is again starting from node 3. And both uh, 2 and 3 uh, joining at 2 and 4 uh, is starting from this point node 2. And again uh, at node 1, uh, we have the end point of channel reach 4. So, at this point we need to specify the uh, conditions, boundary conditions or uh, there can be situation where we have one condition or flow depth condition here at and inflow condition at uh, upstream section. Then we need to consider this one also as uh, our node. So, uh, in this case uh, we are considering that flow depth and discharge both are specified at this downstream section. So, Q D and uh, Y D, uh, this is the flow depth, these two variables are defined at this red node. Now, uh, if we see uh, our junction conditions, so we have junction number 1, junction number 2, junction number 3. For junction 1, we have the end point of fourth channel reach that is 4 comma N4 plus 1 and for junction 2, uh, we have the end point of channel 2 or end section of channel 3 and starting section of channel uh, 4. And junction 3 again for this one we have uh, end section of channel 1 and starting section of channel 2 and channel 3. Now, we can define uh, our equations uh, based on uh, these internal and external junction or boundary conditions. Now, uh, let us consider uh, the case uh, where we have trapezoidal uh, channel cross section. In trapezoidal channel cross section, uh, we have seen in our gradually varied flow problem, if this is 1 is to m1 and 1 is to m2, this is the area. Uh, this is by 
so this is the initial area here and for this triangular sections uh, if we add this m1 plus m2 into y square by 2 this will be the area for uh, remaining portion and perimeter uh, or weighted perimeter this is b and on these two sides we have one the square root of 1 plus m square uh, m1 square plus square root of 1 plus m2 square into y. Uh, so weighted perimeter will be up to this. Now we have hydraulic radius which is r equals to a by p, t is uh, top width b plus m1 plus m2 into y. Uh, we can uh, define the values uh, for our problem. Uh, uh, till now we have defined uh, the junction type, uh, our external boundary condition type, a number of uh, channel reaches, number of sections. Now let us consider this problem. Uh, with this channel data we have uh, this one. For channel reach 1 uh, we have 100 meter length. So, uh, starting from 1, we have this junction, this is another junction and red one, this is uh, external boundary condition. So, for this problem, uh, we have this is uh, channel reach 2, channel reach 3, channel reach 1 and this is our condition. Uh, maybe last one I can use green so that we can easily identify this one. This is channel reach number 4 and uh, condition, junction condition wise this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. So, length of channel 1 this is 100 meters, uh, width is 50 meters uh, that means for trapezoidal section we have width of 50 meters and this is 1 is to 2 that means uh, we have 2 and 1. Although uh, from drawing it is not uh, the exact one. Channel reach uh, length that means this is the segment length for each section. So, for first one we have total 100 meter for channel 1, channel 1 we have 100 meter, from this 100 meter we have 25 meters uh, as our uh, channel reach length or this is segment length. So, can just draw this is 3, 4 and uh, one side we have this node. So, uh, starting from uh, for this is for channel reach uh, 1, starting from section 1, section 2, section 3, section 4 up to section 5. So, in this case n1 equals to 4 and n1 plus 1 equals to 5. Similarly, uh, for other channel reaches uh, for next one channel reach 2 we have 15 
100 meter length, uh, channel reach 3 we have 500 meters and channel reach 4 we have 100 meter length. So, for channel reach uh, 2 uh, this is uh, this segment uh, length is uh, 75 meters that means we have N2 equals to 20 and N2 plus 1 equals to 21 sections for second channel. So, in this case we have 5 sections, in this case 21, uh, this is 500 uh, that means uh, 4 sections in 100 meters. So, again we have 21 sections here and last one we have 5 sections. That means for this channel reach 1, this end section 5 of channel reach 1, that means 1 5 is joining at this point. In this case, 2 1 is there. In this case, we have 3 1. Uh, at this junction, we have uh, 2 21. In this case, we have 3 21 and end point uh, or starting point for channel reach 4, we have 4 1. So, this is the basic information uh, for our uh, channel network. Uh, we have different n values for different sections and slopes are also uh, different. And uh, last one uh, is our channel connectivity. Channel connectivity, uh, this is for channel reach 1, this is 0 and 3. That means, it is starting from 0, there is no channel junction here. So, uh, I am writing it as 0 and next one uh, channel junction is 3. So, this is 3. Channel reach 2, it is starting from 3 and ending at 2. Channel reach 3, it is starting at 3, ending at 2. Uh, channel reach 4, it is starting at 2 and ending at 1. So, with this information, uh, we can start the problem. So, uh, next information uh, required for our problem is the downstream boundary condition because uh, more or less we have information about our internal boundary condition because we cannot directly specify the discharge or depth for our internal junction, uh, but we need that information for our external boundary condition. For external boundary, let us say this y d or y depth is 3 meters and at external junction, at this external junction, we have a different situation. This is uh, internal node 4 and if we have this external node uh, at this level connect by line, this is channel reach number 4 and we have specified depth y d that is ok because we can directly specify it equals to 3. But the discharge is minus. Why this minus sign is there? Because uh, we are uh, extracting water from the system or uh, water is coming out from the system. So, this 250 
uh, meter cube per second, this amount is negative. This is not added to the junction, uh, this is a negative quantity uh, for this junction. And what is this 5 9s minus 99999? So, uh, to write the program, we uh, need to specify certain uh, information or we need to input certain information for our understanding. What is that understanding? If minus 99999, uh, which is uh, a different quantity, if this is there within this uh, matrix, then we will consider that we do not have any specified boundary condition. Uh, that means, uh, for this depth, we are considering column number 1, discharge, we are considering column number 2 and row numbers are actually for different junctions. This is junction number 1, 2, 3. For junction 1, we have specified depth and discharge condition. Let us say that uh, we have a different problem where uh, we have discharge condition or Q U condition at this inflow junction. This is internal node, internal node and this is again external node. So, for this problem, let us say that this is channel number 1, channel number uh, 2, channel number 3, channel number 4, uh, we have Uh, we have this uh, node number 1, uh, 2, 3. Now, we need to consider this uh, channel uh, junction 4 also. So, if we consider channel junction 4 and specify the depth at this point, we will have this condition this is for depth, this is for our discharge. For depth and discharge, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 junction point in that case. So, for junction 2 and 3, uh, this will be same minus 499 minus 49999 uh, or I am, I'm, uh, or I, I can just write this. For 3 also, it will be minus 999 minus 99999. Uh, discharge condition is specified for QU. So, QU, this quantity is positive. So, we will add this with positive thing and in this case, we do not have specified discharge condition at downstream end. So, this is uh, no specified depth value at upstream. So, in this case, uh, we have this matrix. But uh, in the present case under consideration, we do not have this last junction point. So, we have this matrix which is there to consider the boundary conditions for our junctions. Now, in this case, 
uh, what is required? Required is to estimate uh, the flow depth and discharge across the channels. Now, we already know uh, what is the continuity and momentum equation um, under consideration for this channel network problem. We have this continuity equation, uh, momentum equation. Now, we need to discretize it. So, this is our flow depth y and q is the discharge for our case. Now, this is uh, the general uh, channel flow uh, convention that for any lth channel and ith uh, segment, we have i and i plus 1, this, these are the section numbers and we have elevation head, uh, this is flow depth and this is our uh, kinetic energy head or uh, the case. Uh, we have z, y in this case also and this is the average value of friction slope. Now, in this case uh, without specifying z also we can solve this problem because the difference between these two sections will be S naught into del x L. Uh, L is for a specific uh, channel reach. Now, uh, let us consider uh, the channel flow uh, conventions. Uh, if we have channel reach 1 uh, L and it is starting from 1 and N L plus 1 is the last section. Now, in this case, if uh, we consider the flow is uh, or Q L is positive, so obviously in this case the flow will be from section 1 towards N L plus 1. Now, if, if we have a negative Q, then we will have reverse flow and for a positive flow that means uh, for flow from section 1 to N L plus 1, we have two junctions N J. Uh, a, a j in a j and j in j plus 1. For these two junctions, we uh, will have two different uh, discharge specification conditions or uh, what are these conditions? Because uh, if we consider positive flow, that means we are extracting water from this junction and we are adding some water to this junction. So, we will have negative quantity here, this is negative quantity for our uh, starting junction and this is ending junction uh, or the ending segment, uh, we will have a positive Q. Now, with this convention, uh, we can start uh, discretizing our uh, governing equations for our problem. Uh, algebraic form of continuity equation, if we have uh, this C L i which is for L th reach and i th segment, we will have Q L i plus 1 minus Q L i. That means, for any reach i, we will have i and i plus 1 these two are sections. So, uh, this is the continuity equation uh, or steady state continuity equation. Now, we have four unknowns uh, for our problem uh, starting from i, i plus 1. So, we will have y i q i y i plus 1 this will be q i plus 1. 
Now we need to differentiate this CLI with respect to these four variables. So what we will get? We will get uh, four uh, derivatives. So we do not have any y component here. So this is 0. Uh, this is CLI uh, del QLI, this is minus 1. Next is again uh, we have uh, we do not have this y l i plus 1, so this is 0 and we have l i plus 1, the coefficient is 1, so obviously this is plus 1. Now we can construct our Jacobian matrix to solve the nonlinear algebraic equations, but uh, essentially this continuity equation is not nonlinear in nature. And this is the discretized form of uh, our momentum equation for ith segment of the lth uh, channel reach. Now in this case, uh, this mli, we, do, we have difference between y, z and this is uh, alpha l, this is specific to a particular channel reach. This is q square by a square minus q square by a square. R is again hydraulic radius. These quantities are known quantities. Now uh, we have 2L uh, or 2NL uh, nonlinear equations with 2NL plus 2 unknowns that is discharge or flow depth. This is for a single channel reach or Lth channel reach. We will have multiple channels. So uh, this is our, um, our derivatives for the momentum uh, equation function. So this is y l i, this is q l i, y l i plus 1, q l i plus 1. So I have taken derivative of uh, m l i, m l i uh, with respect to y l i, uh, q l i. Uh, y l i uh, y l i plus 1, q l i plus 1. So we will get uh, these terms. Now we need to implement it uh, in our source code. So for our problem, we have this d1 and d2. These two are uh, channel dependent parameters. Now for trapezoidal channel, uh, we have d a by d y equals to this one. Uh, again dr by dy is t by p r by p dp by dy. Uh, and so these are the values. We can directly utilize uh, these uh, for calculation of dA by dy and dr by dy uh, because we need uh, these two uh, values for calculation of uh, the elements of the Jacobian matrix uh, that is uh, generated or uh, that, that are generated from our uh, momentum equation. Now uh, this is the boundary condition uh, for our downstream n, uh, we have this channel reach number 4 and this is the end segment, this value equals to yd. We are not considering any difference in elevation there. So at this point downstream boundary y dby 4 n4 plus 1, this is one condition. So we can write this function as db4 n plus uh, 4 n4 plus 1 minus yd equals to 0 at junction 1. Now we can take a derivative uh, with respect to uh, other uh, section values like this. Now at this level uh, we can 
um, define the downstream discharge condition. Downstream discharge, let us say uh, QD I am adding here. So, obviously Q4 N plus uh, N4 plus 1, this is uh, QD is minus 250, obviously this quantity should be 0. Uh, this is downstream dBq or downstream discharge condition dB4 N4 plus 1 and we need to uh, utilize this information. Uh, these are the elements uh, of Jacobian matrix. Again, uh, we will have three condition each for our junctions. For junction uh, 2, junction 2 that means uh, with channels 4, 2, 3, this is 2, 3, 4. We have discharge condition that means uh, this Q2, uh, N2 plus 1, this is entering into the junction, this is entering and this is leaving from the junction that is why negative and uh, we can equate this y4 at this level and uh, y2 at this level. Uh, we can omit this z difference there. So, uh, this y4 and y3 again we can equate uh, for our problem. Uh, similarly, uh, we can get uh, elements of Jacobian matrix from there. Now, for junction 3, again uh, we will have uh, channels uh, 1, 2 and 3 connected to it. Channel 1 is entering there, that is why positive, these two values are negative there. Uh, so, we can define the condition or the this Jacob elements of the Jacobian matrix. Now, in general form, uh, we will have uh, these equations. Uh, these are for interior uh, conditions or in, in interior segments starting from 1 to NL and for all L, all L in this case, we will have 1, 2, 3, 4. This is all L, uh, we need to write this. Now, uh, then we need to add this downstream um, boundary condition there. Then uh, we need to add this junction conditions. So, obviously, these are increments and junction number 3, uh, this condition is there. So, now, we need to implement everything uh, in a computer program. Now, how to uh, uh, input these uh, information in our system? So, uh, I can just directly transfer the initial values. Uh, this is channel reach number uh, or channel reach number 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, these are lengths, uh, these are width values. Uh, these are slope values, uh, this is uh, segment length, uh, these are n values, this is S naught, this is J n 1 or junction 1, J n 2, junction 2 for connectivity. Another uh, information matrix will be required uh, for specification of boundary condition because at the downstream end. Uh, or channel junction 1, uh, we have this specified boundary. For others, uh, we do not have any uh, information available. Last one is junction connectivity. In this case, uh, let us draw our original channel. This is our external node these two are our internal nodes. Okay.
Okay. So, in this case, uh, this is junction number, junction number 1, 2, 3. On this side, first column uh, provides information regarding uh, number of segments connected to this junction. For this junction number 1, only one section is connected. What is that section? So, this is section number uh, N4 plus 1 of the fourth reach. So, we will write these, uh, this particular information in terms of plus and minus number. So, in this case, the channel is starting at plus 1 ending at minus 1. In this case, channel is starting at plus 2, ending at minus 2. Channel is starting at plus 3, ending at minus 3. In this case, channel is starting at plus 4, ending at minus 4. So, a minus 4 means that last section is connected. Plus 4 means first section is connected. So, for this channel segment, this channel, uh, uh, channel reach uh, for this particular junction, we have last section connected. So, in this case, uh, we are writing minus 4, other two entries are 0. On this side, this should be the maximum number of nodes connected uh, to a particular junction, we have three junctions, out of that uh, maximum number of nodes or sections connected is 3. So, this is uh, size is 3. So, 1 plus 3, this is 4. So, in this case, uh, second junction, this is junction number 2. For junction number 2, we have 3 uh, channel reaches there. So, this is plus 4, plus 4 means this is the starting point of channel uh, 4, minus 3, this is the ending point of channel 3, minus 2, this is the ending point of channel uh, 2. Again, third uh, junction, this is ending point of channel 1, this is starting point of channel 2 and starting point of channel 3. So, with this we can start uh, the programming thing. Uh, 